Hey guys, I'm Bob and I'm working on the game Brukel. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we set up seamless first person cutscenes. So, um, what's a seamless first person cutscene, you might ask? Well, so this is the kind of cutscene where you're walking around in first person and all of a sudden the game will take control of your camera, move it around, make you look at things, um, and then it will give you back control. And we don't want the player to feel like the there, there, there's any camera cuts um, while this goes on. So um, that's what I'm going to show you how we set that up. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. Instead, I'm just going to show you how it's set up and you guys can just fill in the blanks. Uh, now, first off, this map that I've got here is basically just a default first-person map with the default first-person character. Um, I, You know, you need uh, a player character that's set up like the default first-person demo character that you'll find with Unreal Engine. Um, I'm using Unreal Engine 4.13, actually. So it will work with that. If, if, if you're going to use um, the default first-person um, blank project, I'm fairly sure that's not going to work because there's no camera attached to your player character there. So what you need is, first and foremost, a player character like the one in the first-person demo. Um, so anyway, I, I deleted the mesh and all that because we're not using that for the Brugal project. Um, but basically, let me just pull it up. Our player character. Oh, here we go. Paper character. Oh, first person character. So that's actually the default one. Looks like this. Um, it's a lot slimmer than the Space Marine, which gave us a couple of clipping issues in the beginning, but we sorted those out. And um, yeah, if I open it up, this is basically the stuff that's in there. And I do believe that all this stuff was that came with the demo that I opened. There's also a gun offset and everything, which we all deleted. Um, and, you know, the, the mesh that was here and everything has been deleted. But what you have is you have your, um, your capsule component and the capsule component has a first person camera, which I think is needed for the way everything's set up. I, I haven't tested it with other ways of doing things, but this is your starting point. And you can just go into um, Epic and when you create a new project, you can take, you can, use the first person shooter example just the default one where you have you know all these cubes standing around and you can shoot balls at it anyways <laughs> long story short so that's how everything has been set up um so what else have we got um, in this scene we have a, a trigger volume i will use this trigger volume basically what i want to happen is when the player walks into the trigger volume my player camera will switch with this camera here this camera will do a whole bunch of crazy stuff and we end up at that camera again. All right, cool. So, um, trigger volume, I'll run you through it real quick. This is actually all the code that I'm using for it. You could easily turn it into a macro. So what we do is you select the trigger volume, you right click and you add an event. In this case, you add an on actor begin overlap event and that will just trigger everything. Next up, we will disable our input for the player character and the controller. Then we will um, get the view target of our player controller and we'll set that to a variable. I call it player camera. Uh, we need this so it's easier for us to access, access it later on again. And then we're going to set view target with blend. That's basically a function that does most of the magic for us. It's going to blend between uh, two different cameras. We hook up the player controller to the target. Excuse me. And... Um, our new view target for our player controller is going to be the camera actor. So basically what it does is, while I'm walking in here, la 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 la, minding my own business, all of a sudden I trigger this, it's going to grab the camera that I've just shown you from the player character um, object, the first person player character, and it is going to um, move from that camera to this camera. Um, also, as you saw earlier, the player will no longer be able to move. If the player will be able to move, you can actually, if it has a match, you can actually see it walk around. Um, I don't think it matters too much for this script if you leave this out, but, you know, um, it's not a good way to do things. So um, there's a blend time of one second, I think. <laughs> I, I haven't really checked what the unit for this is, but... So here we're basically blending, and then we want to play... Um, a sequence. So I use a sequence. To create a sequence, it's fairly simple. You just right click in here, you go to animation, and you add a level sequence, and it will make something like this. If you double click it, um, you get your sequence. And sequence is kind of like After Effects or Premiere, or you know, it's very similar to Adobe software that I used in the past. Um, but you know, there's other cinematic uh, software that use a similar approaches. So um, 
what you do is you get your camera actor, you just make one, you drag it in here. You could make other cameras in here, like a cinematic camera, but you actually want to use a different camera from a cinematic one. I think I should explain that really quickly first. So um, let me show you. If you type in camera here, you have the choice between the regular camera, which is the one that we will be using, and the Cine Camera Actor. I'll pull up a Cine Camera Actor real quick for you, so you have some idea what that looks like. Um, and as you can see here, this one looks black. The ones we've been using look blue. Um, now, the black ones have all these really cool settings if you're into making movies. If you, you know, you're making an animated movie. I don't know, you work for Pixar or something. Um, you can do things like set it to Super 8 or um, decide what focus you want, what kind of lens settings you want. All these really advanced things that I know very little about, actually. But uh, with the blue cameras, which are, I would say, the video game cameras, I guess, um, you have different options and you can set the field of view and all that kind of stuff and you spawn control rotation and, and so forth. Um, but what you will have when you start is it will lock its constraint aspect ratio. It will set that Boolean to true. So set that one to false. The reason why is because um, the aspect ratio, so it's basically the ratio of your camera. Um, so if you set that thing to, to true, it will always refer to, I think, 16-9 aspect ratio. Um, and if you lock to the camera, you can do it this way. So you go to perspective on a camera actor. This is what that camera sees right now. Um, and you'll see those black bars. And if I want to get rid of the black bars, I do not constrain the aspect ratio. So what does that mean? Well, um, you know, since my little viewport here it's not 69, it will just fill up the empty space with the black bars. But I don't want that. I mean, I don't know exactly what aspect ratio my game is going to be played at. So I just want it to use everything and don't put black bars at any time because that will, you know, destroy the seamlessness of what I'm trying to do. All right, so to release my viewport, I have to click here. Now it's released again, and there we go. Now, um, we were talking about the level sequence, so I'm going to double click it again, open it up here, you know, the After Effects type of thing. Um, and the way it basically works is you can um, mess with this interface, check out another video on YouTube if you want to know how this works. But, you know, to be honest, I, I was able to work with it fairly quickly because I've used software like this before. The, the main idea is that this is your time up here, and you can put your object, like you put it here, then you click on these keyframes, um, and it will save the, the transformation of your object. So in this case, it will save exactly where this blue camera is right now, how it's rotated, and what the scale of the camera is. So then I move to my endpoint. I want it to stop down here um, and rotate in another direction. So I, you know, let me show you. So it's rotated and everything as well. So I put the camera there, and then I click the transform thing again that says add new key at the current time. It adds those things, boom. Then I went to the middle. I moved the camera up like you see there, and I did that again. And if you put all those things together, you'll see that it will, you know, show you all the keyframes that you'll go through uh, on that animation. If you need extra detail for it, I found that's very, very helpful um, while I was making Brucal, because at some points it will mess things up, like translating rotations and everything. Um, you can click on the sh on the animation keys on the curve editor, and this is awesome because here you can just you know, really fine-tune the interpolation between every frame. So, um, you know, just so you know that that thing is out there, you, you'll have the same keyframes, but you can actually move them around and you can set the actual values. If you click on it, you know, at 2.4666, we set the value to 5.69.6000. So, you know, really convenient and, and easy to fine-tune your stuff. So anyway, you, you make an animation that way on that camera that you've put into the scene, um, and then you can close this again. And then you want to drag your test sequence into the scene. I, I put it down here. I don't think it matters that much where you put it. Uh, just put it somewhere where it's easy to see and easily accessible, I guess. Um, and at this point, I think you can actually move your camera around because it's no longer locked to that level sequence. But I think it still has to be in there. Um, well, you'll see in Blueprint why. So what I do at this point, I select my, uh, my level sequence. So test sequence 2 in my case, and the camera actor. And I drag and drop those things in here. Um, and here you'll see test sequence again. So test sequence, um, I basically pull up a play function on it, on its sequence player, and I get the length of it. So what this will do is it will, as soon, well, let me get back here, as soon as the player goes into the overlap, he will no longer be able to move. We will record 
um, what the camera is that was associated with the player character. Um, then we will blend from that camera to our camera actor, which is basically this camera here, that object. Um, and then we will play the level sequence that we've just made. Uh, we get the length of it, and then we set a delay because after we've played it, um, we want to continue again once it's done playing. So that's why we hook up the length to the duration. And once um, you know the delay has been completed, so once that animation has run its course, we are going to target to blend back. Um, so, sorry, we're going to set view target with blend again. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to... Um, move the um, the camera from the end point. So at this point in time, let me open this up here real quickly. Um, so at this point in time, we're right here. So our camera is going to be here, but we need to go back to the camera of our player character. So um, what I did was I blended back to my player camera. So at this point, the, the player will be blending back to the player camera. Um, but what I would actually like, though, is I would like my actor to be here looking at the door instead of him going way back here. So um, what I did was I set a player character in here because I need these values. I need to know what this location is and what that rotation is. So next, I've teleported my actor. Um, so I, I teleported my player character here and I set those values uh, minus 230, minus 166, minus, you got to be really careful with the minuses because um, if you double click it, it will only select the, the number without the, the sign. So um, minus 230, minus 266. So these things, you know, you guys can see it's exactly the same that I've got in here. Now, um, what this basically will do is, so first I set back my camera to the player character, but at this point in time, my player character will still be somewhere here. Um, but I would rather have him be down here because <laughs> it's better for my scene. <laughs> so um, I got these values and I'm teleporting him towards that scene. Now, um, the rotation here is zero, 0, and the rotation here is zero, zero, 0080. Um, why is that? Well, with the teleportation, um, I ha well, I've tried a lot of things and I noticed that this just doesn't work. You can't set the rotation when you're teleporting. You need to set the rotation not on the player character. You need to set it on the player controller. Um, using the control rotation. So, and this is where I've put in the 80 of my um, player character here. And at this point, you can just delete it because I don't need it. I just needed the values. All right. So, set control rotation, and then I enabled the input again. And basically, that is the entire blueprint that I used for it. And, you know, this might be dumb at some point. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this works, and it works perfectly. I haven't had any issues with it, and I just wanted to share. So, let me play it and see if everything works now. Hope it does, because I also have to re-record everything. Look, so now I'm on the level sequence. It blends for a sec. It ends the level sequence. It blends to the position where I want it to be. And obviously, you can fine-tune this as much as you like. Um, and let me show you really quick what happens. Because um, somebody, you know, I'm not sure I explained it too well, because I'm doing this really fast, and I didn't prep for this at all. But let's say I'm not teleporting. So this should put me back in the box when um, I actually triggered the animation. So let's see what happens. So I'm flowing. That was the blend the fast part. Now I'm on the level sequence and now we're getting to the end. And now it just shifts me back to where I was originally when I walked into the box. And I think, you know, you should be able to do it again, moving back and forward. There you go. Whoops. Oh yeah, because the camera's at the end now. So now it blended directly to the end. And it blends back. <laughs> All right. So, you know, it gives you some idea of how it works. Um, I think Everything is absolute if I'm correctly. So let me try this real quick. If I move this around, I don't think it's going to change anything of the camera. So let me walk in here real quick. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you put your level sequence. It will just be in there. Um, and I think if you delete this thing, it will no longer work. Um, well, it's referenced by the blueprint. Um, well, what you could do is just grab the test sequence here because we want to blend with that camera. Um, so what you could do is test sequence and then camera, um, can I get the camera control, the actor that's, in, that's associated with it? Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure what I, how I would do that. I know you can hook the view target up directly, but I don't think that's actually um, going to work the way I've set it up. 
Um, if you guys know how I, yeah, see, it, it's just doing something weird. So if you guys know how you could get rid of that camera actor that you no longer need, put it in the comments. All right. Oh, and if you see something really stupid about doing it this way, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's it for me. Hope this helps. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Check out the Brugal game. <laughs> I'm sure we put the link in the description. Bye-bye.